Once again, we'll wrap up just with a few odds and ends. So first of all, we've been focusing a lot on the data cleaning and data input functions that you have in, in uh, Tidyverse. But just so you know, there are alternatives in base R. I think it's helpful when you're learning R just to learn one or the other. As long as you can get it done some way, you'll be able to go pretty far. But it is helpful when you're reading other people's code or even example code in textbooks and things like that to understand that there are other ways to do this. Um, so, for example, for renaming column names, in dplyr, we looked at how to do that with the rename function. In base R, they'll actually use call names. So we've used that before to test and see what the columns are. But it turns out you can put that on the left-hand side of a gets operator and actually change the values in that. And so that's often done in, in code for people who are doing more of a base R style of coding. For select and slice, you can use square bracket indexing. We've looked at doing this for vectors. You can also do it for data frames. And in that case, you'll put in the first value your selection for the, the numeric values, the, the position values for the rows that you want. And then on the right-hand side of the comma, you'll put the columns that you want. Filtering can be done with the subset function. And then instead of doing mutate, typically you would use a replacement assignment expression. Um, and so a lot of times there you will see a data frame name with the dollar sign and a new column name and then and then um, a gets arrow. So again, that kind of thing where you've got a little bit more going on on the left hand side of a gets arrow, just like with column names that we've really seen in any of the stuff that we've done so far with this kind of tidy verse approach. I wanted to reemphasize one more time this idea of the package function notation. So this is doing the package name and two colons and then function. This lets you, again, access any function regardless of whether or not you've loaded that library. So it can be really helpful if you can't remember the name of a function in a particular package. So let me just give an example here. We've started using the stringer package. So let's say that we know that there's something in the stringer package that will let us do the strings to uppercase letters, but we can't remember the name of it. You can do the package name in two colons, and then with tab completion, it will pull up all of the options that you have, all of the different um, functions that are in that package. So we can scroll through, through this, and if you notice on the right, it's giving us some hints about what each of the functions do. So we can go through until we see something that looks like it might be right or might be familiar. So we'll go down and we see all of these string two, and here we've got string to upper. And we can go over and check and we see that that converts the case of a string. So that's another way that's very helpful for remembering what the exact name of a function is as long as you know what package it's in. Again, we won't use this very often in most of our code because it takes so much longer than just loading the package with the library call and then using it. But it is helpful for figuring out what functions, if we know the name of the package like I just showed, and it's also useful if we ever use a function that belongs to different packages. So we talked some about the filter function today. We use the filter function that's in the dplyr package, but there are also filter functions in other packages. If you ever run a filter call and it worked before and it doesn't work now, what might have happened is that you loaded a new library that's also got that there. So an early thing to check is to try putting dplyr and then two colons uh, where you originally had the filter, and then you can run it again, and um, that might fix the problem if it, if it did have to do with some ambiguity in which function from which package to call. And then this is just, again, that note for being able to identify the different functions that come within a package and also to find the help files for that. So you can use the same trick with a question mark first, and then when you run that, it will open up the help file for it.